Today I am working on installing addressable RGBs into my Mazda Speed 3 uh, stock headlight housings. And this is, I've been working on this for quite a while and we're finally at the point where I have cracked my headlight apart and I'm starting to install things. So right now we have this uh, addressable RGB halo ring. Uh, that is 110 millimeters in diameter. I had guessed that because I didn't actually have the car, let alone the headlights, by around the time that I had ordered these. So it's a little bit bigger than I anticipated, but I think we're going to be able to make it work. I just adhered this in this morning, and hello, I had used uh, a very light amounts of shoe goo in the areas that matter. So back here, uh, as a precursor to that, I noticed that this um, chrome bit is a little bit oval compared to the ring, which is actually a perfect circle. So it actually only makes contact in two places, like right here and right here. So I have shoe goo in this area. I kind of, on this side, I kind of stuck it into the V groove between the ring and the chrome bit. And it's not quite as clean as on the other side, but honestly, I don't think you're going to be able to notice. And on this side, I actually stuck it behind the ring. So I used shoe goo because it's pretty rubbery and pretty elastic, and I'm going to be slamming massive potholes in this, no doubt. And if, if I ever get out of the car and I see this thing hanging off one day, I am going to cry. Because that means that I need to unseal them again and fix it properly. But... I, I have a pretty decent feeling that this is going to be alright. It is, you know, it's flickable. It just needs to deal with the weight of itself. And, uh, yeah, so this ring has an input and an output. Each one is three wires, five volt ground and signal. So the input to this ring I have snaked through, see if I can get it on camera, snaked it through the side of this boot. So Mazda has this boot back there, the thing with the yellow wire hanging out. Uh, they have a bunch of wires potted into there, and I am just shoving my three wires alongside of that. I figure if I do that and I fill it with grease, it should be pretty waterproof and all right. So that's our, that's our input from the outside world into the headlight housing. So I'm just using these... These connectors, which seem to be the standard for addressable RGB strips, I have a million of these after ordering so many LED strips in trial and error trying to figure out what I was going to use for this project. So that goes in to the ring's input, and then the ring has an output as well, which I have not soldered yet, and that output is going to go up here along the side, and it is going to plug into an LED strip that is going to go right there. Precisely this LED strip, which is inside this sort of silicone enclosure, and it looks very nice. This strip is 100 LEDs per meter. And the channel that I stuck it inside was actually made for some slightly thinner LED strip. And also it came with LED strip inside of it. So my way of getting this done cheaply, because if you want addressable RGB strip inside this sort of housing and you buy it as is, it's friggin' expensive. So what I did is, uh, and it's not available on Amazon at all, so what I did is I bought this stuff, which just had boring white LEDs inside of it, and I slid it all the way down. This is the bottom side. This is the side that's going to get taped down, so you're not going to see this. And I bought some pretty sexy 100 LEDs per meter strip, and I stuck it in there. A bit of a pain in the butt, but you only have to do it you know, once per headlight. So this is going to go inside there. And we're going to use some double-sided tape, and we're going to clean it up all good so that it stays in there for the life of the install, I pray to God. Uh, so this is going to go in here, and the input to this strip is going to be right here, which once I attach this, is going to be up here. So into the light, into the ring, out of the ring, into the strip. Alright, progress update. 
this stuff is taped in there, and I've spent way too much time fidgeting around with it, and I think it looks pretty good where it's at right now. You will see the final product, obviously, when I'm done. And it is currently hardwired to the light, so right now this is a little bit annoying because these two things can't get too far away from each other. But I plugged it in, it does work, it does look amazing. And right now, I'm giving this stuff a try. So since this doesn't have any more rubber on it, like the original one had from the original butyl rubber application, we need to add some new stuff. I really do not want this to leak and get moisture on the inside. So this stuff I got off Amazon, not too expensive, and I am just stretching it out a little bit and then placing it on top. And once I have done a full lap around, I'm going to massage it down a little bit more. And then we can start thinking about uh, sealing this thing back up for real. All right, it has been a while since I filmed anything because it's a friggin' shitload of work. But look at it. We got our LED ring in there. We got our strip on both sides. And I'm currently working on wiring everything up. There is indeed a three pin connector coming out of this guy and coming out of this guy that there were not previously. And I have wired these guys up. So that's going to the microcontroller. That is going to the LEDs. That's for this side because it's really close. And by the way, I didn't mention this yet. I'm shoving everything in the fuse box and hopefully I do not short anything out. I don't think I'm gonna. This is the 5 volt regulator that I'm using. It's a bit of a chonker and hopefully overkill because I'm going to be drawing around 10 to 12 amps at 5 volts, which is super oh, just a, a weird a weird electricity configuration, but this thing should be good for that much amperage, I hope. We're going to see how hot it gets. I had to trim down some of the fins to get it to clear this uh, this fuse. We'll see if I end up going with this long term, but so far, it looks like I am going to be able to, without interference, get everything in here so that we're not adding any unsightly stuff to our beautiful engine bay. Oh, here we are. It is all hooked up. No hidden wires. This is the real deal. That is exciting. My fan's on. Yeah. What? Oh yeah, it disconnected the battery, that's why. So, aside from the battery cover not being on right now, just looks like a regular fuse box, eh? Nope. Some idiot's been in here. So to explain this a little bit, we got the 12 volt to 5 volt regulator that is getting fed power from right here. I tried to make this not a super hacky bodge job, but we're splicing into wires here. So the thick gray wire is ignition. So only whenever the key is, well, when the button is pushed in the correct orientation, does this get power. And this other gray guy down here happens to be a ground. I said earlier I couldn't find a ground. I started probing around and I found one. I hope it you know, isn't a ground attached to a relay or something. But anyway, it's working so far. So this is the power for everything. Only active whenever the vehicle is actually on. Goes to this thing. This thing spits out five volts. Goes to this Arduino, which I really should have taken some pictures of before I wrapped it up. But there's a lot of wiring going on in there. And that is hooked up to this Bluetooth module. And its outputs are going to the headlights. So I'm actually quite happy with how clean this looks. So this this cord, uh, this is three conductor wire. It's actually made for like house appliances. I got it from Home Depot. And I wanted something that was black and held the three conductors and wouldn't look totally out of place in an engine bay. I think it looks pretty all right. So we got, they terminate there, they go down. One of them ends like right here, it's really short. And then the other one is taking a trip along with one of the radiator hoses down there. Hopefully the heat won't be a problem for that. It's, it's fine, it's fine. And it goes under that, all the way. And then down here, it connects. And it works! Man, I'm so stoked.
Another thing, another thing uh, I noticed is when you turn the car off, this circuit stays on for a little bit, like 30 seconds. I'm gonna have so much fun walking away from the car with these lights still going. I'm such a dork.